There are literally hundreds of thousands of bottles of whiskey on the market. So if you've got up to $1,000 to spend, which ones do you buy? Well, in this video, we're gonna give you our five top picks. So welcome back to the channel everyone. My name's Mark Littler. I'm a whiskey consultant, whiskey broker, whiskey market analyst. And if you want to buy and sell whiskey, head to marklittler.com. We've got loads of information there. Now, if, you're, if you've watched this channel before, you'll know that we mostly talk about collecting whiskey. And in our last video, five dream bottles of whiskey, it's quite unlikely that those bottles are ever going to get opened because they're treated more as a work of art. Now, some people, some sadists out there actually open bottles of whiskey. It's quite hard to believe, I know, I know, I know, but they do. And one of the biggest offenders is Phil Dwyer from Whiskey Wednesday. Now, he's a good friend of mine and because he drinks a heck of a lot of whiskey and he's got a fantastic palate, we asked him to give us his five selections of bottles that he would buy from the Sotheby's Timeless Collection, which is coming up on the 23rd of September. So the first bottle on this list is a Little Mill 25 year old Douglas Lang bottling as part of their XOP range. Now it's only in at four to five hundred dollars, so it's somewhat of a bargain really. Now. If those of you who don't know too much about Little Mill, you'd be forgiven because there's not actually that much to know really. It was one of the oldest distilleries in Scotland at one point, set up in around circa 1772. It opened and closed dozens of times. And then the reason why I say there's not that much to know is because there's not that much recent history. And in fact, the distillery was completely demolished in 1996 following a fire. So this is one of those distilleries that's got no chance of coming back online. Now, the stocks are managed as part of the Loch Lomond group. So there's been some really expensive, and quite prestigious bottlings of Little Mill come out recently. But this one was released by Douglas Lang and it's part of their XOP series, which is where they, what they reserve their, 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 their creme de la creme, uh, creme de la creme, their family casks, the, the, the most prestigious bottlings that they've got, they keep them for this range. Now, it's quite unusual to find a Little Mill 25 year old at this price range. It really is a very affordable single malt. I mean, compare that to what you could buy from Macallan. You know, the Macallan Home Edition has just come out. A no age statement whiskey with some watercolors that come with it or prints of watercolors. Whereas from this, you could have a 25 year old whiskey from a distillery that's been demolished. that's never going to be coming back online again. And from a lowland style, because Little Mill, of course, was one of the lowland distilleries, one of the long forgotten lowland distilleries. So that is why Phil picked it as his first choice on this list. Bottle number two on this list, it, is from a distillery that many of you will know and many of you will probably have bottles in your collection of already and it is of course a Springbank and it's an 18 year old Springbank part of the authors series and it was released it's a cast strength bottling at 56 and a half percent now this one's in at 450 to 550 dollars and this is a release from Hunter Lang now Hunter Lang is a, a part of the offshoot sort of company that came about when Douglas Lang, the producer of the famous, or the bottle of the last bottle, split in around 2013. Now, Stuart Lang and his two sons set up uh, Hunter Lang following the split of Douglas Lang. And this author series was one of the pre-existing series that the two brothers were running before they moved to Hunter Lang. So it's all a bit complicated, but you just need to know that the Lang family have probably got some of the best stocks of whiskey in the whole of Scotland. Only the likes of Gordon and MacPhail and some of the other bigger bottlers like that are gonna have stocks that compete with them. So when Hunter Lang come out with a bottling, you know it's gonna be of the finest quality. Now, not only with this is it an amazing 18 year old Springbank for just four or $500, I mean, try and get anything from the distillery at that price. You, you know, you probably can't even get on the waiting list for these bottles, let alone actually buy them direct from the distillery. And it celebrates Alexandre Dumas, who's a famous French author from the 19th century. And it's part of a, an author's edition series. Now, the presentation's really nice. It's a limited edition of 96 bottles. And it's, you know, it's fantastic presentation, single cask spring bank what would that cost you if it was a distillery release? So the third bottle that Phil selected is an Ardbeg 21 year old Old Malt Cast bottling and it's a 15th anniversary edition. Now this bottle's in at 450 to $600, which for 21 year old Ardbeg 
is sensational. I mean, the majority of hard bag that's coming out nowadays is no age statement, or it's the stupendous price of a cask that's being sold. And in which case, if you wanna know more about that, watch our video that we did a couple of weeks ago about it. Now, the Old Moat Cask series was bottled as a series, it's one of the oldest or ongoing series of bottles in the whole of Scotland, really, from an independent bottle. The Connoisseur's Choice probably outbeats it, but it's up there with being some of the oldest and most historic bottling lines that there is. It was started in 1988. They were all bottled at around 50% ABV. And this is a special bottling commemorating the 15th anniversary edition of the series. So with this whiskey, you've got an Ardbeg 21 year old, an edition of 136 bottles, incredible presentation from one of the oldest independent bottling lines that there's ever been. And it's only 450 to $600. It really is great value. So the next bottle that we've got is only in the sale at four to five hundred dollars and it's a Glen Farkless 1986 Series 5. Now this is one of six bottles that came as, a, as part of a set or it was released as part of a series of six bottles, each one representing a different generation of the Grant family. Now this is four to five hundred dollars. Yep, okay, let's see what you get. You're getting a 30 year old single malt 30 year old single malt for four to five hundred dollars we talked about glenn farkless and how they're undervalued by collectors in, in in a previous video we call it my top three whiskey investments of 2022 so if you want to watch that video you'll understand a bit more why i think glenn farkless is massively undervalued but you barely find anyone who drinks whiskey that says glenn farkless isn't great it produces a fantastic single malt and this is 30 year old single malt for four to five hundred dollars not only that, it's a limited edition of just over a thousand bottles, 1,094 bottles. That's part of a series that you can build the entire set with. And it's a cask strength whiskey with amazing presentation. I mean, it pretty much ticks every single box. And so as do so many of the Glen Farkless bottlings. It's just that the, the investors and the collectors really haven't cottoned on to Glen Farkless in the same way that they have with Springbank. So we're on to the final bottle now, and this would be my pick as well. If I could buy any of these bottles that Phil selected, this would be the one that I'd go for. And it's a Portel and 12 year old Douglas Murdoch bottling. Now, Douglas Murdoch, you've probably not heard of them, and that's for good reason. They were set up in around the 1970s, so were mostly distributing a few blended malts, but they also did four, four single, you know, uh, single malt releases. One was a Legic and uh, the other three were Port Ellen's, and this is the youngest one that they bottled. It's a 12 year old Port Ellen. Now, if you look at the bottlings that the other did, I think there's a 17 and a 21 year old. They got fantastic reviews on Whiskey Fun. And what makes this really unique is that it's a very young Port Ellen. Now, of all of the bottlings, there's about a thousand bottlings of Port Ellen on the market. And I think there's only 20 or 30 that are 12 years old or younger. So young Port Ellen is quite scarce. You know, the distillery famously didn't produce many bottles itself. It only produced one technically, dis, you know, official bottling. And that was the Queen's Visit bottling that recently sold for a hundred thousand pounds. And that was a very young age statement. Now, of course, with the young age statement, you're gonna get a slightly different profile from the whiskey. You're gonna get a lot more of that peat and phenols coming through because the longer the whiskey mature, the more those phenols, which like which is which are the, the compounds responsible for delivering the, the peaty flavor in whiskey, soften. And that's why things like Octomore are bottled incredibly young because they want that really, really high peat content. Another thing to consider with this bottle is the fact that the Port Ellen distillery is about to reopen. Diageo have spent millions, tens of millions of pounds investing back into Port Ellen. So when this distillery comes back online, like Brewery did last year, there's gonna be a huge amount of fanfare and marketing, which I think is gonna give all of the Port Ellen bottlings a big boost. And rare independent bottlings of a young Port Ellen like this are gonna be on collector's wish list, that's for sure. So there we have it. There's Phil Dwyer's from Whiskey Wednesday's top five picks from the Sotheby's Timeless Collection. Now, what do you think? Which bottle would you like to open more than any that we've mentioned here today? And what about, have we missed anything? Are there any bottles in the sale that you think are great value and you would love to crack open? Well, get in the comments and let us know.